how do I counsel the seller to correctly position the house in regard to price? One of the things we have to realize is that a lot of sellers right now, it's an ego challenge to them. What winds up taking place is they're a little nervous about selling the house at a lesser price because they think that perhaps they're not getting full value because just a couple of years ago, pretty much any house in this country was worth a lot more than it is today. And they don't understand why they might be the first generation that's going to take less money for the house than what they paid for it or less money than what someone else paid for it a couple of weeks ago or a couple of years ago down the block. So what we need to do is overcome that ego with facts and figures. If we look at the next slide, what we'll see is this is a percentage appreciation in a five-year increment starting back in 1980. So we can see that from 80 to 85 and from 85 to 90, 90 to 95, and 95 to 2000, that range was between 25 and 27%, because that's what the normal appreciation is in five-year increments. But what happened, the anomaly, was not that prices are coming down now. The anomaly occurred between 2000 and 2006. I realize it's not a five-year increment, it's a six-year increment. But prices in this country went up 89%. If you sit in front of a homeowner and let them see this, they can realize that that's where the anomaly went, or was. What we need to do now is take that number down off that 89%, and it's already come down, depending on what part of the country, 20 to 30%, and I realize that. And you have to take a look at your market to do that. But what we're going to be looking at is a further reduction because it just went up that 89% and let people see that. Now, what will wind up taking place, another way that you can go ahead and look at what appreciation and depreciation is going to be, is this isn't a steadfast rule, but it is a pretty good guideline. Look at the amount of inventory in your market right now as far as what they call absorption rate. And very simply, that is this. How many houses sold last month and how many houses for sale? Divide the amount of houses for sale by the amount of houses that sold. Quick example, if there are 100 houses on the market and 10 sold, you have 10 months inventory. If there were 20 houses on, uh, that sold and there were 100 for sale, then you have five months inventory. It's a simple math equation. But once you know how many months inventory is in your market, then take a look at the slide. Because back in the 2003, 2004, the early 2000s, we had one to two months worth of inventory. What occurred then? Double appreciation, double digit appreciation. Five to six is the norm. If you have five to six months inventory in your marketplace, that means you're in a normal market. But obviously, most markets we're in right now have doubled digit over 10 months. Anything over nine usually means, again, not a steadfast rule, but something you can sit and talk to your sellers about because it's a great guideline. If there is double, uh, more than 10, double digit amount of months for sale on the absorption rate, then you're going to have double digit depreciation. So take a look at that. In the next slide, I made a graphic example that you can use with your homeowners. Take those numbers and fill in, which you can do right in the PowerPoint that came with this, Take those numbers and fill in, how, in the blue box, how many houses were for sale, and in the green box, how many houses sold, and let them see the disparity. Now, if in your market it's, it's five, six months, then you have to make the graph a little smaller. But don't think that you have to make the green box in direct proportion to the blue box. It's more of a concept that you're trying to you know, put across. So if you're anywhere eight, nine, ten months or more, this graph definitely applies. Just ch change the numbers. That's a very visual depiction to your homeowner. This is the amount of houses that sold. The blue box represents the amount of houses for sale. And let them see that. Now, the other thing that they might do if you're talking to them about price, they might say, well, you know what? Let me wait. And they think that in, sometime in the near future, things are going to get okay. With the next graph helps them through that process. And there's a graph that a lot of the agents uh, that I deal with absolutely love. This is from the Case Shiller Report. We could take a look at the red dot. That's today's price. And they predict that it's going to hit bottom at that green dot. Now, if you look at the left axis, axis, I should say, that's not pricing. That's not like dollars. What Case Shiller did back in 2000, they valued every single house at 100. Every house, no matter what the price was, was valued at 100. And then if it went up 10%, it was now 110. If it went up 20%, it was 120. So you can see that across the country, because this is a national graph, we're still about 65, 67% above what it was in 2000. But what they're predicting is that the bottom's not going to hit until November 2010. So what we're looking at is that for at least the next 18 months, 
prices are going to drop rather dramatically. But that, even then, it's not going to be that, well, the next day prices go back up to today's value. They project out, and that's the blue line. And they can only project out to November 2012 right now. And still it hasn't reached today's price. That gray box with the arrow, that's kind of giving you a feel for if it continues in that path, that we're probably going to be 2000, the middle of 2013 or 14 before we hit today's price again. So for those homeowners that are looking to wait, put this graph in front of, it, of them and explain it to them. Because it's, again, a very visual depiction that if they wait, they're going to have to wait a long time. Well, I hope that helped you as far as the um, sellers are concerned and getting the price down and making sure that they don't wait in order to do that. Use it.